At this oyster bar in downtown Vancouver, business is down about 50% these days. The restaurant has been able to keep about 30 employees on the payroll, in part because of the wage subsidy. This autumn and winter is going to be very challenging and we don't know what to expect. So we Without really the financial help, the general manager the says the impact would be uh, severe. We were Probably closing down the restaurant at some point. I mean, if you're losing money every month at the end, it's just like you can't be sustainable and stay open. Which is why he was relieved to see the aid will be extended until next summer. Businesses have been profoundly affected by the pandemic, but what the government calls the greatest tragedy is the thousands of deaths in long-term care homes. In the throne speech, the government said it would amend the criminal code so there are penalties for those who neglect seniors and put them in danger. I think it's about time. Jacqueline Mitchell's 94-year-old mother, Lena, is a resident of the Eatonville Care Centre in Toronto. Dozens of residents there have died of COVID-19. That's why she also wants the government to act on its new promise to create national standards in long-term care homes. We need to do this. I don't care who's in power. It's not a political issue. It's a quality of life issue. It is a safety issue. Come on, sit down and have a snack. Another commitment put forward today, a large investment in child care, but Elisa Hutton is skeptical. She's heard plenty of announcements before, but says she never ends up getting much help. She's a single parent. Her son, Noah, has autism. I feel like I have to choose either family or career, you know, financial stability or being able to care for my child. I don't see where there's a lot of supports going in there to, to lessen that burden. One that feels much heavier during the middle of a pandemic. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Vancouver.